Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on getting started animating for game engines. <clears throat> in our first video we looked at how to import reference footage and edit it in a way that we can use it in Blender as, an, as a PNG sequence. Now we're going to come back into Blender and start looking at how we can add that to an image plane as a reference guide for animating our door to. So let's just come out of the render and let's just add a general uh, general layout. You can see I've got a new scene. Okay, and I'm now going to go to add um, where's reference? Just have to remember, jog my memory. Where was it? Not camera. We want reference plate. Um, Oh, there we go. Image reference or background. I'm going to add a reference. And then we're going to go to our folder we created. Uh, too many hard drives. <laughs> and then we go to reference, edited, and you can see our PNG sequence. Now, if I click on the first one and then I go to relations. No, 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 no. We want this. Um, and we want image sequence. Okay, yeah, you can see. Oh, it is working. So it did work. It just doesn't like frame zero, obviously, because we didn't render a frame zero. <clears throat> so we can use it in this format that Blender pumped it out. But if we come back to the rendering, uh, the video editing anyway, we can um, be more specific here as well if we want. So if I hit dot, hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Um, and now I'm gonna oh we're gonna change the location of it just because um actually let's just change it to door rather than it just to make it easier to find the file. I got my backslash in there, yeah, cool. So now just hit enter there, make sure that's all good. Now render animation. Oh, it didn't like PNG dot um let's try rather than dot hashtag hashtag we'll put hashtag hashtag one two three dot png try that there we go and now you can see it now has the number before the format <clears throat> so there we go we've got our image sequence again and we'll come back into our layout view. Let's just select our image plane again, and then we're going to change this to the door version. Open that, make that an image sequence, and ta-da! All working. <clears throat> cool. So there's two different ways you can do it. Um, but just for the sake of sanity, I'd always recommend making sure that you go file name dot hashtag 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 png to get your image sequence <clears throat> cool so we've got our door um reference not on the door <coughs> scene so now we've got this um i'm just gonna rotate it um yeah get my so just to come into blender and actually now we've got something here to work with um let's go through actually some of the controls so <clears throat> you can see my image plane has, when it originally came in, was on the camera. Um, and I can see now if, if I hit E on the keyboard to rotate it, um, you can see it's not rotating the way we'd expect because it's in global axes rather than local. Um, this is quite important when animating to know the difference between uh, your transform orientations. So local orients to the object. So that's more what we're expecting. You've got normal, which um, will face depending on what direction the normal is. And then you've got gimbal. Uh, gimbal is a really complicated topic. <laughs> um, we won't go into too much today, but um, we'll go into that when we come more into character animation because um, the whole point of gimbal is, if I just show you an example of this, if I rotate, um, 
this round in Y. You can see how the Y axis moves and the X axis moves. But if I was in a local space, um, eventually, the, if you were thinking about the axes of Y and Z here, sorry, uh, X and Z here, eventually they would get to a point where these two axes would cross or line up and a similar thing can happen with rotate y you're rotating round you can get to this x and a similar thing can also happen with um z so <clears throat> gimbal is when two axes end up getting aligned and you you're rotating um will not do what you want it to it's basically the uh, best way i can explain it I've been animating for a long time and I still to this day really struggle to explain gimbal lock to people and gimbal problems. Hence why I want to leave this for another day. <laughs> um, but yeah, main thing to remember is um, local is your friend most of the time. Um, but we want to switch between local and global sometimes because especially when working with characters, um, if you've rotated a foot, you don't want to be moving it that direction a lot of the time you want it to just move down um which is why we'd switch to global and local <clears throat> makes it easier when you've got things like this where it's not aligned to the world space um yeah so i'm just gonna rotate this round and get this in a position that feels a little bit more comfortable like that. <clears throat> and then over here on the right hand side if you click this little arrow you've got your rotation settings. So these rotation settings, you can, if you zero them out, let's see what happens there. Hey, we got a nice flat image plane, much better. Um, now, if we go to, oh, let's rotate it in the X 90 degrees. Ta-da, that's more like it. That's more what we want. And um, now we can move it up and we can scale it out. I wanted to scale. Um, go away, free you new tool. Ah, this is one of the things I, I struggle to always get out of the mindset of Maya. Um, but yeah, if you do, yeah, actually, let's go through the controls. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so, W on the keyboard, move around. Um, e on the keyboard, rotate. Doo, 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 doo. R on the keyboard is scale in axes. However, this middle one, for some reason, doesn't want to work for me. Um, but if you want to scale in one for uh, all axes equally, hit S on the keyboard, and ta-da, you can scale just by dragging your mouse. Don't even need to click. Uh, you can click when you're at a happy scale you like. So I'm just going to click there. And then now, if I wanted to move up, I can also hit G on the keyboard, and again, without clicking, I'm just moving it around. Um, now, the problem with this sort of moving around is it's not locked to any one axis, so it's going to, like if I hold, if I, oh God, that's awkward. If I hold mouse, middle button, click, it snaps to axes depending upon um, whereabouts it is. So like you can see how it's jumping backwards and forwards there. Um, so you can hold mouse, middle, middle mouse and click to drag along an axis to try and be accurate. But you can see that I'm now pushing in and out that way and pushing up that one. Um, so that's quite a cool little uh, thing. You can also push, so once you've got, like I mean, move mode at the moment and it's locked to the X axis. Um, so if I click on it on, uh, mouse, middle mouse click on, um, so if I hold middle mouse, click and drag, you can see it now is on the x-axis. So if I now let go, uh, it just sticks to the x-axis. If I middle mouse, click and drag to the y-axis, so you see how like that orange dot is now moving on the y-axis, and now let go, it's now just gonna move up and down in the y-axis. And now if I middle mouse, click and drag to the z-axis, it's moving backwards and forward in z, which is quite a cool trick. Um, it takes some getting used to though, hence why I'm still not used to it. Um, if you hadn't already guessed, Blender is not the tool I work in all the time. Um, but that's uh, a conversation for another day. Um, now, so that was a middle mouse click to 
to get to a stick to an axe easy. There is another way you can do this as well. So if I press X on the keyboard, it just locks to the X axis straight away. And I don't need to do anything else. If I push Y on the keyboard, it locks to the Y axis and moves up and down in that Y axis. And then you've guessed it. If I press Z on the keyboard, it moves backwards and forwards. Um, yeah. And then once you're in a position you like, so I'm just gonna go to my Y axis because that was the whole reason I went to this. And just left click and ta-da, it's done. Um, so yeah, moving around in my in um not my in Blender is um a little bit alien, but actually quite cool in some respects. So um so yeah, let's um actually do some work now. So um we've played around with the move tools, the scale tools, and the rotate tools. Um well, I think we're ready to animate. Yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, zoom in our timeline to those 53, 56 frames. Uh, so we've got reference footage. It's in a nice position. Could probably do it moving it back. Um, let's just move it back. Now, again, remember that cool little tool. But hey, we're moving it back without having to do any like major stuff. Um, Cool, so we've got our scene, we've got our reference footage. Let's just save it. So we go save, and we'll give this a name. I'm just gonna put this in my, I'm just gonna create a folder. Let me call this scenes. And we'll call this <clears throat> draw animation. Um, now, something that I'm going to be annoying about, always try and use underscores <clears throat> because it's just good to get in the habit of it. Naming conventions are everything in this industry. And if you're not following them, people will get angry. Um, there's a lot of anger out there for these sorts of things. So now we have our image plane added with our reference footage. So now in the next video, we'll be bringing our door asset to animate to. We'll be adding keyframes and then looking at how the principle of the bouncing ball applies to the animation we're adding to this. If you'd like to see the rest of this series, make sure to subscribe to the Patreon where you have exclusive access to the videos before anyone else, plus any assets for, the, for this project. A massive thank you to our subscribers and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.